Hey guys, in this session, I'm going to show you um, the proof of sine rule. So this is when you use sine rule for known right angle triangles. All right, guys, so how are we going to go about proving this? First off, we're going to take a non right angle triangle. All right, we're going to take a non right angle triangle. We're going to call this little angle A. We're going to call the side opposite as little a. And we're going to call this B and the side opposite as little b. So, you know, how do we go about finding the relationship between this to prove the sine, sine rule? Well, the first thing is we need to break this triangle up into two right angle triangles. So we're going to put this line through here, which is a perpendicular line to the base. All right. And create two right angled triangles. So what you should see is we have one right angle triangle with angle B and hypotenuse A and another right angle triangle with angle A and hypotenuse B. Now both of these side, uh, both of these triangles have the same red line there that's in the middle there. So what we can use is we could, you guys should be able to see that we could actually use the sine rule. All right, we can use the sine rule because this could be called as opposite because it's opposite the angle. B could be called the hypotenuse. And then for the other triangle, angle B is there, so this side is going to be opposite, and side A is going to be hypotenuse. So we're using the sine rule for this, all right? So we can write sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So I can now write for both of these triangles in terms of A and B and, and the opposite side as well. So I could write this as sine of b equals opposite over hypotenuse hypotenuse is a and then for the right hand side triangle i could write sine of a equals opposite divided by hypotenuse which is b so rearranging this i'm going to get a times sine b equals opposite b times sine a equals opposite and what you guys should notice is that opposite equals this opposite equals this, which means I can rewrite this now as A times sine B equals B times sine A. All right, this is the relationship. In the next slide, I'll talk a little bit more about what it is. Uh, but I mean, I'll just show you one more thing. We can rearrange this. We can rearrange this as sine B over B equals sine A over A. I'll talk a little bit more in the next slide um, into what the actual sine rule is. So what is the sine rule? So the sine rule, you'll see it written like this. Sine A of A equals sine B of B equals sine C of C. All it, is, all it means is this, guys. All right. When you have a non-right angle triangle, all right, so let's say you have angle A there, then the side opposite is that one there. So the side is going to be called as little a. If we have angle B, the side opposite is there. That's going to be called little b. And finally, we have angle C, and the opposite side is at the bottom. So it's going to be called little c. All right. So this is a general equation, but most of the times we only use sine A over A equals sine B over B. Okay. In the next series of videos, guys, I'll show you how to find the missing side and missing angle. But this is basically what the sine rule is. Now, just remember, just because it's written like this, it can actually be written in multiple ways, as I was showing you in the earlier slide. So for example, if you have sine A over A equals sine B over B, you could rearrange this so you could actually have sine a over sine b equals a over b that's another way of writing it or you could ha have <clears throat> a over sine a equals b over sine b so yeah i mean it's just it's just a fraction and it's just rearranging it so you can pretty much use any one of these as your sine rule or if you just can't remember the sine rule then just use this part right there in the orange box. Cool. That's basically it for this session, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, pop it in the comments below and I'll answer 
when I get a chance. So thank you for watching.